I've been thinking about this particular topic for a long time. I was in an improvisational comedy group a long time ago. I had, I had so much fun. And there's tons of what I think is interesting about improv, which is just all a bunch of made up stuff, is that there's a lot of rules about how to do improv better. And some specific rules from improv that I think helped me both become a better game designer at designing games, but also, mo most importantly, become a better game designer as far as interacting with other game designers, interacting with non-designers, uh, and helping me with brainstorming techniques. Uh, improv is a lot, is very similar to brainstorming. So the, the first, like, most important rule of improv, from my perspective, is this rule. <laughs> this rule, yes and. It, it, this is what it means in improv. In improv, you're constantly making pitches to your buddies. You walk into a scene and say, hey, mom, get me something to drink. Uh, what you've done is you've made a pitch. You're my mom, and I'm your son, and I tell you what to do. That's the relationship we have. And the character who you've just declared to be your mother has some options at that point. They, they can accept the reality that you've pitched, or they can deny it. They can say, I'm not your mother, you know, I'm your roommate or something. And then it, it kind of breaks the scene down. But uh, accepting the pitch, saying, yes, that is the relationship we have, um, and, and adding to it is... It makes the scene a lot better. And so if that character says, you know, didn't you just finish the last milk I got you? You, you add to the relationship and you, you accept the pitch that they made. And that, that, that yes and mentality makes improv a lot better. I had an experience when I was uh, first working on the Hearthstone team. I had a very sobering experience that I wasn't as good of a game designer as I thought I would be. And uh, I worked with Eric Dodds, and he taught me a lot about game design. And one of the, f the, the first misconceptions I had about game design is that a good game designer is somebody who can shoot holes in all kinds of ideas. Like, oh, I can see that's not going to work. Let me tell you all the ways that's not going to work. And Dodds would come up to me with some ideas, and he'd pitch something for Hearthstone, and I'd say, oh, you know, they're going to they're gonna hack that, and that's not going to be good, and that's not going to work. And Dodds told me, he said, look, I'm going to stop coming to you with my ideas. You just shoot down all my ideas. And that horrified me, and I remembered this rule from improv, and so I started, I, I tried this. I said, look, I'm just going to yes and every idea. And it turned out, actually, what happened was Dot's ideas weren't actually bad. They were actually really good. I was just, <laughs> I was just sure they weren't going to work. Uh, but also, when you start yes anding ideas, even if some ideas are bad, um, you, you sometimes find good ideas hidden amongst them. So that's, that's yes and, it's why it's important for improv, but we can also use it in engaging with each other. There's, a, there's like a level two of this concept, and this is more about actually using this concept in the game. And that's this statement here. If this is true, what else is true? And this is also the same concept of there's a pitch, there's a reality, there's something that we've set up, and then taking that to the next, maybe not logical conclusion. And I call it finding the game, and it just trying to find what's fun about this idea, what's what's cool about this thing that that this reality we've set up. So in this improv scene that I was in, this guy walks on the stage. Oh, whoo! Opens the fridge. And then uh, the, the, his buddy was like getting a prop. He didn't actually see what the guy just did, but he he comes on the stage. He's like. Hey man, what's up? Oh. And now he doesn't realize that he's just denied the reality. The, this guy said, the fridge is over here. And he just said, the fridge is over here. And so the third guy comes on the scene and he's like, all right, if this is true, what else is true? He's like, hey, what's up, guys? And now there's, uh, we're in a room full of refrigerators or. A department store? I don't know. So uh, that's, that's the game. And, and the rest of the scene was like that. People walked in like, oh, what's up? Anyone want a soda? <laughs> so we, we try and do this on Hearthstone. We did it a couple times. Our next expansion, we're announcing it next week, is the Grand Tournament. And knights and jousters from all across Azeroth come and compete in this Grand Tournament. And so obviously, like, the Horde would send some Horde knights, and the Alliance would send some of their finest knights. 
But if that's true, what else is true? Well, maybe the Murlocs send the greatest Murloc knight to compete in the tournament. Maybe the pirates send a, a pirate who rides on a parrot with a, a lance that has a hook on the end. Uh, maybe the centaurs send a knight. He doesn't even have a mount. He just trots in with a lance, you know. <laughs> and that's, that's finding the game. That's finding what's fun about the idea and, and carrying it out to a, a crazy place. There's another thing that improv can help us with, and that's brainstorming crazy ideas. And this is a, a thing that some improv people use both to help them practice coming up with ideas, but also to help break down these mental barriers. We spend all of our lives learning not to say that stupid thing. People will laugh at you if you say that. And so this practice will, can help you uh, get over those barriers that you've created and, and learn where those barriers are. And it works like this. You say a word, uh, podium. And then you say the first word that comes to your mind that's associated with podium. Wood, forest, uh, logging, uh, pollution, uh, civilization. And you just keep going. You try and say the first thing that comes to your mind and just do it as many times as you can in 60 seconds. And we're going to practice that right now. So I'm going to say a word and then Dodds. I'll have you say a word, and then Pat and so on will go down the line and just say, I'm just going to say a word. It's okay. It's going to mess up. Just say the first thing that comes to your mind. All right. Here we go. Microphone. Ben Brode. Ben. <laughs> all right. Sorry, guys. Sorry, guys. Sorry, guys. All right. All right. All right. Jeans. Uh, pants. Down. Shoes. He <laughs> said shoes. Shoes. Off. On, here we go. Lost. Found. Dog. Great, this is perfect. All right, that's associated list. You guys got it. That's great. And that, just doing that helps you practice just, just going, with, just saying what comes to mind. And this can help find those, those things that are catching you up. I, that, I think that does help with brainstorming, but there's another, there's like a harder version of this called disassociated lists. And this is where instead of saying the, the first thing that comes to mind that's associated with that thing, it's sort of the opposite. You have to say the first thing that comes to mind that's definitely not at all associated with that thing. So that might be something like this. Podium, Godzilla, Justice, uh, M&Ms. Uh, I forget, anyway. So, uh, <laughs> so that's, that's an example of disassociated lists. Let's practice that. Let's see if, uh, all right, here we go. Uh, uh, gospel. Brussels sprouts. Chicken nuggets. Grandmothers. Cat. Batman. Firecrackers. Oh, that's perfect. Okay, great. Awesome. So that's this associated list. Those actually, I think, can be more funny than associated lists. And there's a game in improv that really shines when you use this concept of disassociated lists, and the game is called New Choice. And in improv, this is like the whose line is it anyway style improv, where there's a referee and people competing for fake points. And uh, a, a team gets up on stage and they're doing a, a scene. And at any point during the scene, after somebody says a line of dialogue or, or does an action that com commits to a, a, a story element, the referee can yell, new choice! And that person has to then like scratch what they just did and say, say or do something totally different. And that game is, is most fun when you do something really totally different. The game sucks when, when you get up and you're like, uh, hey, I'm a raccoon. And then they go, new choice. Hey, I'm a bunny rabbit. New choice. Hey, I'm a squirrel. Like, okay, whatever. It's, it's the same choice. You're not making a different choice. And the game is most fun when you're doing something totally different, totally unexpected. And actually, you can, it's, it's a good game to play with new improv people because when they make a really bad choice in a scene, you can help guide them into a better choice that takes the improv scene forward. So, hey, I'm a raccoon. New choice. Hey, uh, I'm lost and I need directions to the subway. Uh, new choice. Uh, hey, I'm President Obama, and I'm here to give everyone Obamacare. Uh, new joy. And so that, just, just going totally different where you were before, and getting out of your comfort zone and where you're thinking is, is, is awesome. So for game design, for brainstorming, I really like thinking about this game and thinking about, you know, often when we, when we are trying to brainstorm a solution to a problem, we're thinking about that problem and the, the classic ways those problems are solved. And New Choice thinks about it in a totally different way. And, and sometimes that takes you to a really brilliant place. When we were designing the arena for Hearthstone, 
we were stuck for a really long time on asynchronous draft. Traditional card games were played in draft mode by eight players sitting around a table, and you pass a pack of cards to the left, and you get the rest of a pack of cards to the right. If you played Seven Wonders, it's the exact same thing. And you, you build your deck slowly by a, a communal table, and it's really fun, and we wanted that for Hearthstone. And our original take was to take a, a pack of cards and, and staple it to the wall, and then every, there's a bunch of envelopes, and each of them have one less card in them. So you could go down, the, you could open a pack, take one card, put it in the pack of 17 cards, take the, what's in there out, take one card, put it in the pack with 16 cards, and go down the line. You, in, in a way, you're sort of doing an asynchronous draft with the people who have come before you, no longer these eight players. But it, was, it had a lot of other problems, and we were trying to refine all those problems, and eventually, we did a totally different thing where there is no draft with other players. You're just looking at three cards, and you build your deck on the fly. It's got some of the feeling of draft, but, but it's a very different direction. And it was this kind of idea of just kind of looking at things from a totally different angle and not trying to like polish this one thing that we had already decided we were going to do, but thinking about it in a really different way that led us to what I think is a really cool mode in Hearthstone. Also, sometimes as designers, we, we've, we know we are right, and we go to a meeting with somebody else and we're like, yo, I, this, is what we should, this is what we need to do. I, we've, uh, we've talked about it. I'm sure this is the right direction. The, and the other person in the room is like, no, I am sure this is the right direction. And sometimes the right direction is none of those things, and just having to like yell, having someone yell new choice and thinking about something that's maybe neither of those things, maybe that's the right direction. And, and thinking about new choice and breaking up the things that you are sure are correct and thinking in a totally different direction, that can sometimes help when you're arguing about what you think is right. So those, those are some of the, the rules of improv that I remember that helped me out. Yes and, not denying the reality, and denying other people's ideas, building up those ideas and, and adding things to them and making people feel empowered, finding the game, trying to find what's cool about a, a reality or an idea and adding to that and making it a thing, doing associated lists to help you break down those mental barriers and become a better brainstormer, disassociated lists too, and this game, New Choice, which I think helps both uh, brainstorming and challenging the ideas that you believe are sacred uh, that may not be. Those are kind of the, the things that I, I learned from improv that I think helped me a lot and may help you as well.